This is Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today that you will consider this like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, leave a rating and a brief written review, enabled to help others, enabling others to be able to locate this podcast. The last podcast was on the morning routines, which are so vital and so important. But there is something that goes hand in hand with that, and that is the power of the evening routine. And I have eight, nine, maybe ten things that I want to say about the evening routine. There's a quote that I use often that comes from Henry Ford, who said, you can't build a reputation on what you're going to do. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people in life who pretty much live in that territory. They're always telling you what they are going to do, what they're going to get around to, that one day when the stars align, when someday appears on the calendar, when their ship comes in, when everyone is for them and nothing is against them, then and only then are they going to do something. You can't build a life, let alone a reputation, like Henry Ford said, a reputation, by what you plan on doing or are going to do. You have to execute. You have to get something done. So let's start with an evening routine. What are the components and what are the purposes of each individual component? Well, the very first thing that an evening routine does, it helps you to plan the next day. Again, it just sort of follows what I've said before. You see in life, lots of people know what to do. I'm discovering, the older I get, that the knowing isn't particularly the major problem. There are some knowledge issues with specific kinds of information, But most people, in fact, know what they should be doing. That's not what differentiates people. What differentiates folks is that very few are doing what they know they should be doing. It's not enough to know what to do. You must take action. And if you wait around till the next morning and then you get up and go by the phone calls, the emails, or the whims of life, You'll get on your horse, ride off in a hundred different directions, and never really accomplish that which you are paid to do, you're supposed to do, or even that in your heart you want to do. So the best thing and the best reason to have an evening routine is it enables you to plan the next day. You, You have to plan it. And in essence, that is, you have to decide what your priorities are. You have to find the tools that you're, you need. Um, I'm one of those who gets laughed at lots of times because uh, the supplies I use in the morning, from shaving cream and razors and toothbrushes and floss to the clothes that I'm going to wear, are all laid out the night before. I'd, it, it helps me with decision fatigue. I've already made those kinds of decisions. I can get up without thinking it's a habit, and I know where everything is that I'm going to do the next day. I'll even mention in a moment that when I decide what are some of the key tasks that must be done the next day, I spend the first part of this um, evening routine locating the items I need, if it's files, if it's email, if it's a website, if it's a a communication of some sort from someone, I make sure that tomorrow it will be in a folder, it will be on my computer screen, it will be where I can get a hold of it. The reason you have an evening routine is to plan the next day and also to unwind and start to prepare yourself for your evening's uh, sleep. So planning the next day is key, and that's the power of an evening routine. The second thing that I'm going to say, I've already alluded to, a good hour to 90 minutes before you know you're going to go to bed, you need to start uh, disconnecting yourself from screen time, television, computer, your phone, Uh, that, that light shining in your face, that keeping yourself keyed up, You need to now get yourself ready um, for uh, some critical thinking and some rest 
and some winding down. We are addicted to screen time, be it the television, be it movies, be it videos that we're watching on all of the various apparatus we have. The fact of the matter is you need to give your eyes, your mind, and your spirit some rest. So disconnect, begin the process of disconnecting from those things. You really need to start doing that. The third item that I have on my list is I spend some time reading. I start my day by spending a little bit of time reading, a half hour, and depending on the where I am in that evening, if I've had meetings or not, I'll spend another 20 to 30 minutes reading. But during this process, I also review my overall goals, my goals for my life, my goals for the year. I break my goals down uh, for three months, and I just sort of evaluate how, have I, how did I do today? Did I um, keep those ever before me? Am I taking the positive steps that's going to move me along where I need to be? And so that's one of the, the things that I do. A part of my evening routine is spend some time reading good something good and positive and then reviewing your goals. I think the, the unreviewed, the unthought on, the unreflected life is what gets a lot of people in trouble, a lot of leaders in trouble. We just go keep doing the same things over and over and never have a time of evaluation and processing. Uh, is this working? Is this something I should be doing? Is this something I need to be doing a little less of? So make sure you read, review your goals, evaluate where you've been. That's number four. Evaluate your day. Now, there are various ways to do this, and over the year, years, I have changed back and forth as to how I do it. Sometimes I rated it on a five-point scale, five being I really executed well today, I kept focused, or one is this was a lousy day, I did nothing that I should have done, uh, I would do it that way. I, would, I kind of now look back over my calendar, see whatever meetings I had, I see the blocks of time that I had, what I worked on, what was unfinished, what was productive, what was less than productive. It also begins to help me understand what is going to have to be carried over till tomorrow or the day after. Again, as I have said, you must. It is absolutely critical, leader, that you spend some time evaluating what you're doing. It's not just enough to do to wind through life doing things. Are you doing the positive things, the good things, the necessary things, the things that are propelling you forward. A great part of my evening routine is I take a few moments and make that evaluation. The fifth thing that I do this, we're getting now down to things that may be more unique to me and, and you may want to do something different. But I have, uh, de I will determine a little later in my evening routine what my most important task, my mitts, will be for the next day. But I make a promise to myself every evening and every morning that I will not go to bed until I have these three. For me, it's three. It can be five, two, one, whatever uh, resonates with you. But here are the most important tasks that I have to do in a particular day. They are obviously vocationally related most of the time as well as personal. And I have three, but I usually have many, many more things uh, on my list of things that I really need to get uh, finished in a particular day. But three that are just absolutely critical. And one of them, if not two of them, have to be uh, goal-oriented as well. So at, uh, before I go to bed, I look at the uh, most important tasks for that day. And if any one or two of them are unfinished, then I put my head down and I plow through, and I finish it as a part of my evening routines. I do not like doing that, that is, finishing them in my evening routines, but in order to keep myself on task, I have committed that I will not go to bed until they're done. This also uh, propels me the next day to really get working on them, um, to get focused on it the next day. So, that's one thing I check in with in my evening routine. Did I get my most important tasks finished? Which leads me to number six, which is I then look over where I am 
what I need to be doing, what's on the docket for tomorrow in my calendar, are there meetings, appointments, etc. And then I determine right then what the three most important tasks tomorrow will be. And I either write them out by hand or I put it on a, um, a note-taking um, app that I have on my electronic devices. And as I, I oftentimes on paper will write down six, seven, eight, nine things that that could be candidates, and then it's up to me, knowing my life, my goals, my work situation, everything else, what are the three most important that need to be done? I circle them, and then I enter them one, two, and three, and I enter them electronically. For me, I also do it in, on paper as well. And then when I look those three over, I know this, that if those three things are not done by tomorrow night, I will stay up until they are done. Now, I have a tendency to take a day or two on the weekend off, or in those times, my most important tasks may be things that I need to do around my home or things that I need to do with and for my spouse. But part of my evening routine is to determine what tomorrow's most important tasks uh, will be. The seventh item, which is really, really important, is that a lot of times, if I have still some energy, it's really good to spend about five minutes organizing something, decluttering something. Uh, for me, I've already told you, I lay things out. I get everything ready for the next day. And But once in a while, in my home office, I'll spend five minutes picking some things up or or filing things in my closet. I might ret through things and, and uh, prepare to get rid of some things. But you feel better. It has a calming effect, a restful effect at the end of the day if you if you build in a little time to declutter and organize things. Not not a major project, but I, I try not to spend any more than four uh, to five minutes in, in doing those things uh, around. Because here's what I've learned is that the only way around is through, said Robert Frost. The only way around certain things is through it. And so if you have a lot of things that need to be decluttered and organized, rather than saying what's going to take me the next 16 years, just dedicate a five minutes a day toward it and you'll be surprised how much law and order uh, comes into those situations. So spend a little bit of time decluttering or organizing. Uh, the eighth that I do is I read and reflect. Um, I try to read out of something that's positive. For me, it's the Bible. And then I reflect not only on what I've read, but on my life and, and where I am and how things are going. Now, there are people who get into meditation and all of those sorts of things. But my ninth and final thing that I do is I give time to evening uh, prayer. Prayer is an indispensable part uh, of my life. Now, in any given day, it seems like there's always more to do than you have time to do. It reminds me of a quote from Nelson Mandela that, who says, it always seemed impossible until it was done. Haven't you had some tasks that when you looked at it, you think, I will never get this done. I will never finish this. I will never get this completed. But if you keep plugging away, keep doing consistent action incrementally, day in and day out, you wake up one day and what seemed some days, weeks, months, years before an impossibility is in actuality finished. I think the morning and evening t uh, routine remind me of another great truth. Life is short, it really is. So make sure you're doing stuff that matters. And it, if you're gonna do things that matter, you're going to have to be super intentional. You're going to have to work at it. It doesn't just happen by default. I've done these for so long, both the morning and the evening routines, that even when I'm on vacation, it almost becomes my default. And sometimes it's it's hard to just um, back away from some of those things. That's when you know they've become productivity habits. So my friend, that's the power of the evening routine. You ought to begin implementing some or a part of these or even putting in your own unique spin on what the evening routine would look like for you. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal-setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today that this was like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart, 
And again, if you would please uh, subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom and pass the word around to your friends, it would be very, very helpful. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really, really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying, have a great and blessed day. Thank you.